What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of Hitting the Bars. It is your co-host, Savvy Wavy One, with KOC, Kelty O'Connor. How are you doing? Woo! I'm doing not hungover, which is pretty impressive after a Coachella weekend, because normally I am on my deathbed the Monday after Coachella. <laughs> How many times have you been to Coachella? Only twice, actually, because of, you know, 2020, it kind of got in the middle of it, but... I think 2019, 2022, and they missed 21 and 20 for obvious reasons. And before that, I was too broke for it. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. There's, have you seen on TikTok, like, I think it was Saturday, I opened up my TikTok and it's all these Coachella vlogs. Yeah. And it's really cool because it's realistic vlogs of like, there was one I saw of like the glamping that they have, which is actually quite nice. I'm not sure how much it costs. Like nobody ever discloses that. And Mm -hmm. then there's this one girl where she's literally just like intense and like shows that it took her two hours to even shower. And there's something in Washington called watershed. And I had a fair share of years doing that. Just like country, you sleep in tents, you don't Mm -hmm. shower and you just get belligerent. And that's what it reminded me of. Good old college days. They're the best to my Alberta people. BVJ, Big Valley Jamboree. That we could do a whole episode on that because I have stories I mean, the most absurd stories you'll ever hear about those, like, camping overnight music festivals, the things I've seen. I mean, I've seen drunk tattoos, I've seen mosh pits in mud, like, literally mud up to your knees, random DJ parties in the back of people's tents, like, I've, I've seen some things. (laughs) I honestly, like, I tell my friends, I want to go back. We haven't been to Watershed since, like, I don't know junior sophomore year in college weirdly the guy that i dated before michael i have only Uh had like four boyfriends ever in my life the guy that i dated before michael i met at watershed he was my neighbor and (gasps) he yeah it's not weird yeah and we became friends with them and they were older than us and they went to the same school as us and we none of us like had you know liked each other like that we just would hang out with them and i remember the first night he got really drunk um and like woke up and he was like oh i'm so sorry to remember meeting you guys we're like oh no worries and he was like oh my gosh i'm so hungover so the entire weekend he only drank water and then the last day we were like hey where is he and he had overhydrated himself (gasps) there's such thing and went to the hospital oh my god i've never heard that i've only heard Uh, isn't that the opposite he was never dehydrated drank too much water made him feel worse became overhydrated and then yeah I just met him again like when we went back to school and I was like hey we were like you know neighbors at watershed and then that's how we started dating destiny I guess that's a reminder didn't work out (laughs) yeah clearly (laughs) but I was gonna say that's a reminder to all of our party goers is don't just drink water add some electrolytes you don't want to overhydrate throw off your electrolyte imbalance so throw in some salt a little potassium magnesium in that water you're drinking party responsibly Especially at music festivals, that is, they are not, and that is actually a good transition in today's episode, is Coachella, music festivals, they're glamorous, they're marvelous, but they are battle. They are war. And no one, there's some, it's a get a bit better, TikTok's good about that, being like realistic, but like mm-hmm. no one talks about how you have to survive Coachella, unless you're like artist past bougie, and even then, you're surviving it. It is half amazing half hell on earth you know what i don't understand so as Hmm. kelty's somebody that has gone to coachella Mm -hmm. have you ever gone to coachella for work has a brand ever paid you to do anything i i hear influencers do this yeah i know i'm just trying to think because there's been a few times where like i've because there's i've gone to events before like the the morning of at coachella like yeah so they usually have like a lot of events like you hear revolve fest is the most famous one but we went to Oh, God, what one was it? But there's a whole bunch of, like, that's why I can't even remember what brand it is. You just get put on the list. And, like, last year I got invited to, like, HBO Max's and a bunch of them. So they have them on before. But, like, and some people just stay there. Like, that's why they want to be there. It's a bunch of, like, influencer events. Versus me, I'm like, okay, yeah, it's free food and drinks before. And it's something to do. But, like, as soon as the artists are there, I'm gone. Because I'm not missing that. That's what I think. Yeah. Yeah. So So it's fascinating by that. So we'll get into that because we can definitely talk about like the influencer side of Coachella and there's like the music side of Coachella. Not to be like that person to be like, Coachella is about the music and like all that because it's so everything about Coachella is pretentious. Everything. But it's also amazing. I also love it. Wait, I I have a question. 
Yes. I'm going to, every once in a while, I'm going to chime in with a question because I think do. our audience will appreciate that I, I just don't know a single thing about Coachella I and it. I don't understand it from like these influencer stories that yeah. like, they go to Revolve Fest, but then all of a sudden you hear that Revolve left people in like the dirt and like, I don't yeah. even know. But here's one question I don't think, I think all of us would like the answer. Yes. So there's like all these celebrities and all these influencers go mm-hmm. and then say they want to go see the music. Do they not have like security? Like what if you're, I've always heard Vanessa Hudgens goes, like does she just chill in a mosh pit? How does that work? So got to picture Coachella. First of all, picture a massive farmer's field. This just massive, yeah. big, biggest field you can think of. But I'll still and, hunt down Vanessa Hudgens. But Farmer's field or not. Uh, needle and haystack. Because <laughs> <laughs> then there's the one Sahara, de- uh, which is like this massive stage with this like tent. And then there's main stage, which is classic music festival. Just think a big stage, big crowd behind it. And then you keep going in this field. And there's other, like, I think there's like four or five other stages. And they kind of get a bit more indie. Like, the farther you get into the Coachella, the more into, like, the rave scene you get. And you'll find you're a bit more like, you want some dub house? Some, like, acid techno beats? You're, you're going way in the back. If you want Billie Eilish and mainstream, you're going to main stage. And that's kind of how it's shaped. Now... There's 100,000 people in there, and there's still room to breathe. So that's how big this is. Like, that's why I was like, this is war. You are walking. I think, like, every year you do minimum 30K steps, like, just walking around. Like, it's a lot of walking. It's a big place. And so what? how it works with, like, first of all, like, a Vanessa Hutchins, you, it happens. You just see them walking around. Like, it, it definitely can happen occasionally. Like, if you're... I would imagine people at that level do have a security guard. You just might not realize that it's kind of a bigger dude standing beside if you're at that level. But a lot would just walk in. But then there's three passes at Coachella. There's general admission, which is all I've ever forked over for. So that means you're just amongst the people. You're in the crowd. You're trying to go wherever you go. Then there's uh, artist pass and VIP. I should have done that opposite. VIP is the next one. So the best way to describe it is think of just a general stage. It's the big stage. The performers performing, there's all the audience behind it. So that's where general population would go. Now, on the left-hand side, there's going to be like two beside the stage roped off areas. The one closest to the stage would be Artist Pass. Those t- It used to be just kind of for what you would think, like the artist's best friends. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. because it's L.A., it's who's who, how do you get it? That's what the sad thing about Coachella is it just became like a... yeah status statement like i have an artist pass that means i know someone who's performing you know what i mean and there's other ways like i've i've had friends who have weaseled their way somehow and they've got an artist pass because they know someone that knows someone so that's just means you get the nice open area right beside the stage vip anyone can kind of buy it's just hella expensive and you get the private area right behind and sometimes you'll find a lot of influencers in there like someone who just has money and is willing to fork it over and then there's nicer like general is like 550 so i think like vip is like a thousand two thousand and i think it's okay. upwards for artists um if they're mm-hmm. even available uh so yeah so that's kind of for the entire your, weekend i think so or you're gonna day. like it's i think it's for the weekend i want to say i paid like 700 last year for the like canadian so that's like 550 if i remember correctly okay. i could be off by a couple hundred but it's expensive and I'm not gonna lie though. I mean, we've been yeah. looking at Taylor Swift tickets, and they're all I know. like minimum 500. So exactly, I didn't know Coachella was cheaper than Taylor Swift. But I mean, that's rightfully a, so. They don't right, have the queen. A, but that's the that's just like the first charge of Coachella, and that's not oh. where like there's so many other things. First of all, True. getting this. First of all, getting into Coachella. Let's just start with this. Getting into Coachella. You take one of the shuttle buses. So you pay the shuttle pass. So that at all these pickup spots and you get the bus to bring you in to the grounds. So that's going to cost you like a hundred bucks for the weekend. Or you pay like $200 for an Uber who can barely get you and they drop you off. And it's impossible to find Ubers and cabs. So it's kind of, there's one mm-hmm. way to get in. So that's the money. So you finally get dropped off at the front. You're still two to th- three kilometers, no, two kilometers away from the entrance. So you're just at the parking lot. You got to get to the entrance. So you can spend an hour and a half walking in the desert wow. just to get there. Or there's these guys that have these like on bikes with little carriages at the back that fit six people. And you can pay, you know, I think it's like 40 to 60 bucks. It's kind of a wild, wild west. You just bid. You're like, 
40 bucks for eight of us? And they're like, no. Mm-hmm. And they're like, are 60? And you kind of bid, and then they take your money, and they bike you in, and you save an hour. Um, but there's another 60 to $80. <laughs> like, yeah. And so it's like little things like that, or you walk the whole time. Now, also what no one talks about, you know how everyone wears those bandanas? Yeah. Have you ever seen it? It's not a fashion statement. It's yeah. to prevent getting the black lung, as Zoolander would say. And I, my first time, was just a hard ass. I was like, it do- I barely even notice it. I'm, I'm going to be fine. And I didn't wear the bandana. Couldn't talk the next day. Lost my voice completely. Just from the mm-hmm. amount of dust. And it gets so bad. So also, if you're walking that hallway, you don't pay the $80. You're just an extra hour and a half. And that's the dustiest part, the way in. So you're going to lose your voice <laughs> before you even get to the front entrance. <laughs> so like, Dang, that's wild. So there, it's just <clears> like <throat> those kind of things. And then beer, like a beer is going to be $12. You want food at some point. Of course, it's like $25 for a hot dog. Like, do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? And that's why it's so expensive. Everything, all the Airbnbs are jacked up. And so it, it's, so yeah, Coachella, it's going to be hella expensive. There's, and coming in, the sand, you're getting on the sh- shuttle. Also, the lines to get drinks are so long. So those are just the first, but at the same time, the day one, there's something magical about you being in the distance and you just hear that like background you just hear once 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 just like a little in the background you just kind of hear it it's like (gasps) and you're like adrenaline's going and the sun's setting and it is the most perfect lighting of all time it's there's something magical about like golden hour at Coachella it's like the time of year the time of it you cannot take a bad picture at Coachella that's wrong I've taken many of bad ones but you know like <laughs> that perfect lighting like you just mm-hmm. take it that's and you're why like, the influencers that, flock <laughs> it's unbelievable it's like everything I take I'm like I didn't know I was this attractive because you're not it's like a filter <laughs> it's something crazy so it's so. Coachella haze it is and you're just like in it and everyone's love and there it is like a very loving festival like obviously some people are going to be pushy when you kind of get to the front but for the most part like everyone respects people's like space and like people are understanding and I don't know I've always found the Coachella crowd which is crazy considering it's a hundred thousand people to be actually like a very friendly group of a hundred thousand (laughs) people really and yeah I am always interested in people's outfits because I think Mm -hmm. There's some people that go, like, all out for it. And then, like, it's almost like the really cool girls of Coachella, like, the famous yeah. it people are, like, dressed kind of normal. <laughs> and you're always like, wait, is that how you should dress? <laughs> well, it's a funny trend because it's kind of like that's the trend right now because it used to be just classic, like, hippie granola girl vibes was, like, the classic Coachella. And then it became more influencer, more influencer. So it became the place to be these outrageous outfits. And then last year, Hailey Bieber and Kendall Jenner showed up in jeans and a t-shirt and everyone, and it was honestly the best thing because we all needed a reality check. We all need to be like, this isn't a fashion show. It's a music festival. Dress like you'd go to a music festival. So it was fun actually seeing a lot of the girls and there was some wild outfits still, but like for the most part, everyone was very much like denim, some black leather, a little bit of lace, like you know, biker jacket kind of vibe, like just like classic music festival concert gear, but a little elevated, yeah. which is, I think that's the level Coachella should be elevated, like concert wear, not, you know, some avant-garde Paris fashion show. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. I mean, I was telling Kelty, I was going to bring this up. The only person that I really follow that I saw went to Coachella and that this could mm-hmm. also maybe people going you know like you've gone in the past and now you're like Mm -hmm. yeah like i don't need to go again um like i just don't know a lot of people that go anymore um Mm -hmm. but alex earl went with guests which is very random i think um and their outfits were phenomenal but they were so just like chill like normal but guests just like casually picks them up in a private jet they stay in an airbnb and i'm just like you gotta wonder what are you getting paid to go to a fun oh. festival? Like, I just, I would love to know what that girl, I, w- I actually do know one thing that she's gotten paid at secretly. <gasps> I will not reveal. I've oh. told you about this. Okay, wait. Have you? I'm trying to. My friend's company. 
Oh, yes, 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 yes. Mm-hmm. Crazy. And she turned Sorry, it down, flanked. and it was absurd money. Yeah, it was like you know she was she, to something else. She's making big money then, you know. This oh. girl is in college making big money. Oh, Good yeah. for also, her. I, I looked up the... Um, I know, right? I'm like super cool that she gets to mm-hmm. do that. I really like her. But I looked up the Coachella lineup. Honestly, I don't know, there's nobody I would really want to see. But that's... I'm not that into music. You know me. I'm pretty much yeah. like I got my set people. But I, I see Bad Bunny is the main one. Yeah. Uh, Frank Ocean. I like Frank yeah. Ocean. Which we could... Oh, we could talk some dramas because some drama went down last night with Frank Ocean. But anyways, keep going. What happened? I mean, I the rest I, I literally do not care about. <laughs> and people are probably hating me right now. But who who are you going to say that would be significant? Okay. In oh, Calvin Harris. Harris. Oh, we love Calvin. But anyways, here's, I'm actually, even though it's not my dream Coachella lineup, I was very, very happy with this lineup because I'm going to sound like a pretentious music snob, but hear me out. Um, the thing is like Coachella has kind of gone in the rap and it was potentially going to burn itself to the ground if it just became this influencer thing. It just became like, let's get the biggest, like number one person and let's just make it where everyone just comes to be seen. And it's no longer about the music. And I think Coachella did a really cool thing where they made it very international, you know, Bad Bunny and Blackpink. Like it was like from like, you know what I mean? There's such like a diversity in that lineup. And if you even go down in it, there was like such a diversity. And that is my favorite thing about music festivals. You can come for your headliner. Like, you know, there was a couple mm-hmm. in there I know that would like scratch my itch. But, you know, for example, I was just watching the Coachella live stream and I watched That Is Us uh, performance. And I was like, oh my God, this is the most fabulous thing. And like, I binged their whole album and I was like, they are, this is absolutely amazing. That's the best thing about festivals is like, you don't just go see one or two people. You get like introduced to new people that like you might. So that's why I was like, I, there's only a couple of people that would have scratched my itch. And like, that's also why I didn't go this year because first of all, there's a couple of reasons, just my own personal life. But, um, Versus like last year when Swedish House Mafia was coming out of retirement. I was like, I would give my left toe to see them come out of (laughs) retirement at Coachella. So like that, I'm kind of being a hypocrite in that sense of like, but I kind of forgot your question. And there's two weekends. Yeah. Is Hmm. there a cool weekend? Are they both cool weekends? So here's the insider knowledge. If you want to be with the influencers, if you just want to go get your photo taken, and guess what? There's nothing wrong with it. It's there's events and they're fun. And I've been to a couple and you run into a bunch of, you know, influencers and famous people. Weekend one. Weekend two is about the music. Mm. People have taken the photos. The celebrities came. They got the brands spent the money. And weekend two is a bit more like we're just coming to see Frank Ocean and Fisher play. Like, that's kind of the difference in the vibe. Okay, tell me, what's the Frank Ocean drama? So, I was a little confused. He was Sunday night headliner, so last person for him Sunday is the it. Like, that is the show. You have, That is the Super Bowl. You've made his artist. Like, that's top Billy. Really? And They're so the best I, one if it's Sunday? Yes, yeah, so that's kind of what it's like mm. saying. Like, that's you are number one is kind of the name of the game. Now... On Twitter, last night before I went to bed, I saw it was trending, but it was like a weird trending topic. It was like Frank Ocean live stream. I was like, what? And I noticed his live stream wasn't on. And I was like, that's bizarre. Because one of the coolest things is YouTube streams the whole Coachella and it is prime. It's so good. Go watch it. Like, it's an unbelievable production. Like, they've got every angle. It's like 4K. It's like, like you feel like you're there. It's crazy. That's cool. But yeah. Frank, Frank Oceans wasn't being live streamed. I was like, you're not live streaming the most important one. I was like, weird. Went to bed. And I woke up. Oh, shit hit the fan. So apparently it was awful. I haven't seen any footage. So this is just all the headlines I'm reading. I have to, that's, I haven't had time this morning, but on my way to work, I was just on Twitter. So apparently he was like an hour and a half late. Like he didn't get on stage <laughs> till like 11. And there was like odd breaks in between songs, like just kind of silence. And he kind of talked to the audience, but not much. And the description this is me rereading a description not having seen it is it seemed to be like he was kind of like behind the curtains and like people couldn't really see him they have the big project projection screens so like you could see him but only 
from the video. So people are like, is he even here kind of vibe? Because you, oh. yeah. So everyone's like, even the front row couldn't like see him. And it's kind of like, what's going on? And then he brought out some DJ that played a bunch of it. And it'd be different if he like brought out like Calvin. That's one of the best part is like features. Like if you brought out Calvin Harris because he did a song with Calvin Harris, you know what I mean? That would be amazing. Like yeah. that makes complete sense. Um, but it was just like a rat. No, I don't want to say random because it's a very talented DJ. But I just mean like no one we would expect just a random dj performing a bunch of his songs anyway so that was kind of everyone's just like what the hell happened like do you know what i mean everyone like beyonce took a beyonce took a year off to like train for coachella like that's how big of a deal it is so apparently apparently and like the day of he was supposed to have a whole ice rink like ice skating rink um like that was going to be and On then they the had stage? the oh, yeah and like that's how big oh. these like performances are all these like figure skaters were like dancers so instead of dancers and that they had figure skaters on it was this whole production as coachella is and apparently the day of he said no i don't want that wow and so like all these ice skaters were just like okay hey, no big deal we just trained several months for this all the production <gasps> i and that's like the unsung heroes of music festivals are like yeah. the music sound and stage guys so like i just feel bad thinking about these poor stage guys who like day of have to create a Super Bowl set in essence. So they're like, uh, cause everything's like planned. Mm-hmm. So they have to like put like everyone's, they practice building it up, taking it down like for weeks on end. And then suddenly everyone's like, no, we have to scrap it. We're doing, he's like, no, I don't want to do that. And they scrap it and just had to like makeshift it. Um, mm-hmm. So that's the rumor on the street of what happened with Frank Ocean. So that's what Twitter's told me. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Well, hopefully he's okay. Yeah. <laughs> And I don't know. I don't. I honestly don't really listen to a lot of Frank Ocean. Maybe I just don't listen to this genre. I mean, you guys know me. I like Taylor Swift, Jonas Brothers, yeah. and Country, and Lanny. Oh, and- so maybe it's just not my vibe. But I'm like, I don't even really know what what does Frank Ocean even look like. I was gonna say, well, in your defense, Frank Ocean like puts out an album every five years and then disappears off the face of the earth. That's kind of his thing. He's like just he's like private? he released an album. He just is an artist. You know what I mean? I think he's just a classic. Like he produces music publicizes it and just like always has the air of mystery to him and he's not someone who's like you know like not to compare to drake but like drake has a new album every year and that's kind of part of drake's yeah. thing for, so different it says that uh like literally when i type in frank ocean it's like mm-hmm. why did frank ocean cancel coachella what happened to frank ocean at coachella yeah. Shit. which is wild wow that Crazy. would be a bummer if you really do look up to that person Oh, I know Lost. Okay. Yeah, you you definitely <laughs> know. I was like, really you know, know who he is. Yeah, oh but, my gosh, that's embarrassing on my end. Also, this is a perfect time to throw in a little hmm. disclaimer. Kelsey and I, we, we, I mean, the OGs that listen to the podcast knew we oh, were yeah. joking <laughs> about Taylor Swift being on her breakup. And, you know, Kelsey said oh. she's a toxic fan that can't wait for an album, which I think a lot of us look forward to an album. But mm-hmm. of course, we care about Taylor Swift's well being and mental health. Yeah. And of course, we support her. And I hope she is okay, you know. But yeah. we we did basically like a little clip on our Instagram, <laughs> and people came at us. Yeah. And we were like, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't think you listened to the full thing. And no. I'm really sorry if you guys thought that we were being toxic and unsupportive to our girl Taylor yeah. Swift. But you know me. You know, Kelsey, we would never. I especially would never. Because I worship Taylor Swift. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. Just had to throw that out there. Yeah. I will say. I, I just saw a little comment on it. Um, one, she's given us enough music that she never gives us another song. It's okay. So, like, clearly I'm like. Totally it, fine. It, it was just me wants to mourn this privately yeah. completely understand and so, so it, it was just me more playing off the fact that like it's a classic i was just it was a joke and i'm sorry if people are offended obviously your mental health but i will say one thing i'm kind of at this stage right now where i no longer want to say i'm sorry about your breakup i now say congratulations <laughs> you know what i mean like i think mm-hmm. we gotta be like you know what good for you you got out like you know i like divorce parties i'm bringing that energy to people so my rationale is like Instead of being like, oh, are you okay? I'm about to be like, you are about to quadruple your billions of dollars. <laughs> so my You're rationale, glow up. it's it's mm-hmm. a positive. Obviously, though, I hope she's doing okay. And that it's it seemed to be a mutual breakup. So I'm glad. Yes. And her yes. mental health. Also, over there music. has been, nothing has been confirmed nor denied. True. Right? As far as <gasps> I know. But 
regardless, Kelty and I might go see her soon. You know, maybe we'll ask her we at the concert. <laughs> I, I'll put up my hand, be like, uh, Miss Swift, Miss Swift, I've got a question. Yes. <laughs> yes. I have a question for you. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I also need to share this confession session Ooh, because it's very do. applicable to Taylor Swift. Okay. Let me pull it up really quick. So a gal said, I have a confession for the Coachella episode. I have this thing. I don't know when it started. Maybe I started drinking at concerts, but now it happens even if I'm not drinking. If I'm seeing an artist that I really love, I always end up crying when I'm at their concert. Either it's when they come out or when they play my favorite song. I just cannot handle my emotions. It's too much and I cry. It's so embarrassing, but also who cares? But I just had to confess because I thought you guys would find it funny and maybe someone else can relate. And I wanted to say, Jess, I a thousand times percent relate to you. I cry at every single concert. I actually didn't think that was weird. I feel like no, the atmosphere, you get goosebumps. And I know I was thinking of Taylor Swift. And lately... I've been listening to the set list, which you should do, Kelty, so you know every okay. single word that is a On demand it. from oh. me. Uh, <laughs> if I'm going to look over and you are not singing every word, I'm gonna be like, get out. Get out. <laughs> I can fake it. You wouldn't even know. <laughs> but um, I've been playing her set list, naturally. And um, Marjorie, she's playing, and it's about her grandmother. And a lot of you guys know my grandma passed away recently. And I kid you not whenever i play that song i ball my eyes out i was going for a run and it came on when i was driving and i just was bawling like two days ago and i know at the concert i will be crying like crazy to her grandmother's song and like i bet there's a lot of people that do because oh, yeah. it reminds them of like a loved one or whatever oh yeah and if it makes you feel better like it's one thing to cry when it's just like emotional i just get so excited i have bawled my eyes out at both zed and Swedish House Mafia. And if you would talk about embarrassment, like, I mean, I'm rage, like, hand in the air, fist seat, and crying at the same time. And I'm the happiest human. I'm just, like, so overtaken by emotion. And Zed's become an inside joke with me and my friends because, like, we've gone to a ton of music festivals and he's always ironically headlining. So it's just, like, a lot of good memories. But my God, you play Clarity. And, like, it's, like, all my best memories of my best friends come into one and I'm just in tears over Aww. Clarity by zed like that. that's a there's not a more embarrassing <laughs> song to cry over so if you're embarrassed no, that's actually like a don't be. that's a good song though out of context though it's like kelty do you have musical taste it's questionable but it is a great honestly it will forever be the banger of the 2020s or 2010s yeah. well you want to know something embarrassing a lot mm. last time i cried over a song well other than marjorie <laughs> was um at my bachelor party and we were dancing on like that moving truck oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. we were playing love story and i was dancing with maddie and maddie Aww. has been my best friend since eighth grade and she's been like my date to all of the dances sleepovers endlessly learned how to drive with her and like we're you know 28 we're still best friends and so it's like her and i's little song and i was crying behind my sunglasses <laughs> when i was dancing oh, with her and i was like wait this I is so embarrassing it. it's a love story it's a fun song but i just told her i was like i can't stop crying i don't know it's epitome of life it's just it's not even like you're not crying it's just like all your emotions are just yeah you're, you're a worm you're balloon overwhelmed. And we, you, you just pop a little just a little water balloon that pops. it's like when a cat bites you because it's a little like it doesn't know what to do with you it's like overwhelmed and so oh, sometimes yeah. they bite you it's called like a love exactly. bite or whatever that's crying <laughs> oh i love that i love that well actually we should talk about things that would make us cry so to wrap up a little bit of Coachella, I'm going to wrap up the best and worst parts, and then I'm going to have a question to you about Coachella. So for anyone okay. who's considering it or you're feeling FOMO, the best parts, yes, it is like 10 co 30 concerts in one. You're going to, you have no FOMO because well, you're like, I'm where everyone is. The lighting's perfect. It's also iconic because every performer's dream is to play at Coachella. So you're watching like Beyonce play her her performance Swedish House Mafia played there like you know what I mean so it's like mm -hmm. the artist is giving like the best version of themselves so it's unbelievable but now no one talks about the sand that will give you the black lung the wind so everyone's in those cute outfits they're all freezing to death it takes you an hour and an hour and a half after the concert ends just to get on the shuffle like the shuttle to just leave the grounds so everyone's standing at like two in the morning frozen crying hungover uh, coordinating music. So yeah, all these concerts are going on, but a lot at the same time. So you got to battle with your friends. 
and they might want to go see Cascade, and you might want to go see Fred again, and you got to pick because they're on the opposite side. So that can end up happening. Mm-hmm. Also, no phone service. So if you lose a friend, really, you've you've lost your friend. We have many of man downs, many men down. Um, and yeah, so I would just just a reminder: it is the best time and equally the worst time. So let's transition this to what would be the best time. So you have to tell me, Sab. I thought it'd be fun to end off with. What would be your dream lineup that could get you to go to Coachella? Like you get to design the set. Who who's going to be performing? Um. Oh my God. Well, you guys know I'm not good about Coachella <laughs> and the count of I didn't know Taylor anybody. Swift. Taylor Swift. Taylor yeah, Swift. Yes. Taylor so I mean, state the obvious. Taylor mm-hmm. Swift. I'm there in a heartbeat. I think everybody is. Um, yeah. I, I do love Justin Bieber. I also love Selena Gomez, and that would be a fantastic thing to see them there at the same time. Oh, Lanny, love Paul. Yeah, obsessed yeah. with them. Um, uh, who else? Three oh three. Ah, they don't really perform anymore, but I still no, love but them. I saw you guys rage at your wedding to them, and it was a moment. That's I, a moment. I said that solely for my husband. He is obsessed with three oh three. I respect and, it. And uh, I don't know. I, yeah, those are kind of like my top people that I would love other than like I do love country or singer songwriters and I I don't think that's the vibe at Coachella have you been a stagecoach yeah watershed is Washington's version of stagecoach I've never have you been to coach okay no 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 even though I lived in California all of those years I never went to these concerts and I don't know why I'm gonna force you to go to stagecoach next year we're gonna go I take you I would love it it's just I think because I did so literally they repeat it at watershed Oh, it's yeah. the same lineup, just it's the same. watershed. We have like Big Valley, which is kind of, you know I mean? It's like a traveling. They yeah. do it in like different provinces and states. And ours is Big Valley in Alberta and Canmore. So like they all have the same one. Yeah. I feel like the, so all the country artists go. Oh, go I was going to say, who's your lineup? Mine. <sighs> if I got to design it, <laughs> what's good? This would be my dream. So headliner, Skrillex and Fred again, Rufus DeSaul. Calvin Harris, which I'm sad I missed this year. Don Diablo, Showtech. I don't think I'm allowed to say this, but I will. Avicii would be my number one headliner, but RIP. But I mean, this is my make believe. I can make it up. Exactly. <laughs> one. Um, MGMT, Kygo, Post Malone, Kendrick Lamar, Ooh, MK, Malone. Fisher, Dua Lipa, Louis the Child. And then also these three, but I've actually seen them. I'd say Kid Cudi, Sweet South Mafia, and Flu. But I already saw them, so I kind of like X them out because I already saw them at Coachella. But that is the perfect lineup. And obviously wow, no one else so agrees trendy. but me. But that is, that is uh, it's less trendy. It's more of just like a... I caught 70% I, of who you said. <laughs> Post Malone. Yep, yep, yep. I know that one. Flume. It's a, oh, I've heard of that one. There. If it makes you feel get better, last week I texted my friends. We've gone to a fitness class. And I was like, oh, I'm still so happy the the instructor played a bunch of Fred again. I was like, how amazing was all the Fred again? And they're like, who's Fred? <laughs> I'm like, who's Fred? Like, I was like, Fred again. Fred again what? I was like, no. I will not let you guys be this uneducated on it. Anyway, so that we were kind of laughing about it. And then... Uh, we went to class the week after. It's so a Fred again. Turn on the lights comes on. So I go to my friend Lexi. I'm like, music lesson? Who is this? Just blank stare. I'm like, you know what? It's okay. Some of us don't have the same taste of music. <laughs> I was like, you I tried to the, teach them. The dads where it's like classic rock where they like come up to you mm-hmm. and they're like, who sang this? And you'd have to be like, the, the police or, you know, ACDC, Hell's Bells. Otherwise, they'd be no. like, I'm disappointed. No, I no? refuse to be that person. That? No, oh. I, I have oh, had my that dad happen and to me. my uncle forced me to be this person. So I can pretty much tell oh. you whenever there's a classic rock song, I know it. Uh, I think I know those people, but I just refuse to be that to people. But this is more of like, I oh. literally, yeah, that's what I say. Like, but on the, like when this happened, I was like, I told my friend and I was like, Lexi, I'm just like embarrassed for you. So learn this. And then, so yeah. when it came on, I was like, redeem yourself. And she just blank stare. I was like, you know what? I tried. <laughs> you tried. That's okay. That's tried. all. That's all that matters at the end of I the tried. day. And if you don't know who Fred again is, watch his boiler room. And just yeah, I don't just know who Fred in, again indulge is. It. <gasps> oh, I have so much to show you. It's I'm thinking so of Fred, the YouTuber. Is that who you're talking about? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna remix a Fred again soundbite with a Fred again song. 
actually no one hey there delilah or he just has a song called delilah no delilah is the name Uh. of the song but not hey there oh god (laughs) (laughs) in your defense he's like he's like a producer so he produced a lot of music for other artists that's how he got big and just Mm. recently him as a solo artist has gotten really big so yeah wait i have one more person i'd add to my lineup if we're making make believe and that is britney spears I mean, live your life. Add her to the list. I can love her music. If if I can add a work bitch, I play all the time. She does not (laughs) want to go back into the music industry, nor do I think she should have to. But God, do I love her music. But bless, what a time to be alive and witness Britney Spears in her heyday. I would pay big bucks if she was like, I'm having one concert. Because she loves to dance and perform. I'd be like, I'm there. I'm there, girl. Wow, those tickets would be insane if she only did insane. one. I know. It's like Super Bowl. I know, because I'm pretty sure she said she will never go back to performing. Cause she doesn't oh, really? like... I mean, respect. The girl lost a lot of her there's, life from being in this limelight. There's some trauma there. Well, yes. Literal, Understandable. Not like us. Not me being like, oh, my coffee's burnt. Trauma. Like, that's legitimate in her you know i just feel like i I know her so well now that she was just like Uh, in the same vicinity as me (laughs) you guys are in one you're practically besties we should she replace me i think i think i'm being replaced by britney spears guys i started a podcast with her shoot (laughs) i knew it was coming (laughs) she'll come on eventually (laughs) yeah me like just puts on like like her outfits and starts talking like britney (laughs) yeah 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 i would love it i'm like you do have blonde hair so it works i mean i, I just like talked like on the side yeah <laughs> just not exactly. make direct eye contact yeah well all right guys we need to wrap this up kelty and i are actually meeting up for an in-person podcast i don't even fr- fienza yeah. i have no idea but we're gonna have a good time we're gonna have some guests coming up we're just gonna shoot the shit together and create a lot of good content for you guys um, so that's why we're having a shorter podcast this week. But make sure to tune into our Instagram. Check out what we're doing. Make sure to leave a review. Write a review. We love reading them. Um, and we appreciate you guys. And maybe leave us some truth or drink questions on Instagram. Oh, yeah. And we can do some of us. A little truth or drink Q&A style questions we can do. And we'll record for the pod. Perfect. All right. Bye. Okay. Bye.